Speaks Media. I'm here with Josh Waters, hey. R&B sensation. <laughs> I'm gonna call him that. Yeah, we're speaking it. That's what it is. Yes. yes. And Josh is here because he is going to be a part of the Love Peace and Hip Hop Festival for World Family Hip Hop Day. It is virtual this year, and man, some of us are heartbroken because we're used to gathering downtown and raising the roof, you know. But hey, it's virtual this year, and he's gonna be gracing the stage with legendary Rakim. Yeah. How does yeah. that feel? Uh, it's humbling to be completely honest, bro. Like, so coming from Mississippi, I didn't necessarily grow up on them, but as I got more into the culture of hip hop and gained an understanding and then did my own research prior to this moment, of course, you know what I'm saying? Never in a million years that I think I had an opportunity to be able to open up for somebody of his stature and not just him, but DJ Nabs too, you know what I'm saying? So it's love, it's humbling, it's humbling. I was actually gonna ask you that, like yeah. if you if you grew up listening to him. Yeah, no, nah, I didn't, man. My mom, she really was playing like my pops. He 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 passed when I was seven, so it was really just me, my mom's cool, me, my mom's and my brother. <laughs> but she played like neo soul, so the Jill Scotts, you know, ah. the Tanks, the Joes, that type of thing. I got introduced to hip hop because my cousin, uh, Miss Smurf, she was like an up and coming rapper in the city back home. And she kind of put me on the big Chris and the so forth and so on. And yeah. being fans of them led me to like the people that inspired them, which ended up being like hip hop legends. So that's how I found out about these types of people. That's dope. Yeah. So uh, who did you grow up listening to that you really like enjoyed? Um, music Soul Child, for real, for real. At one point in life when I was a kid, you couldn't tell me I wasn't Usher. <laughs> for real though, like I had like, when I was in high school, I had the suit jacket with the forces. I thought I was that nigga, for real. So I would say Usher, Music Soul Child, uh, Erica Badu, kind of how my mom was. I was very into Neo Soul. And then when I got like to high school, got my first car, I was riding around to nothing but rap. So your crits, the currencies, uh, that type of thing, man. Anything that touched my soul, if it didn't stick to my ribs, I couldn't really listen to it, even as a kid. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's lit. I read that you uh, that you grew up in a musically gifted family. Yeah. That your mom was a singer. You said your yep. brother came out of the womb playing drum. Tell us about that. Yeah, so my uh, mom, I can remember they had this local network that used to air I was I would say artist, but not really artist, just vocalist, so to speak. Gospel vocalist. She would have to get up at like five in the morning, Ooh. go cut this set, you know what I'm saying? She would sing a gospel song and it would air probably like seven in the morning. And I would be getting ready for school, watching her on TV like at that time, you don't know that it's just a local station. It's my mama though. She on TV. Yeah. So that kinda kinda pushed me in a direction to want to do it. And then like I say, my brother, he literally He's four years older than me, but this story is my mom and dad used to tell us, like, he would crawl to the kitchen, pull out the pots and pans, and sit on the ground, <laughs> for real, and just I beat. Live. You know what I'm saying? I, I was more of an animal lover, like a Dr. Doolittle type of dude. Like, <laughs> I wanted to be a veterinarian until I realized, wait, I got to cut these animals and stitch them back together. That's not real. <laughs> that ain't my speed. You know what I'm saying? So, I was always around it, and I had this natural, like, entertaining energy about me. Like, I always wanted to perform for people or step for people or whatever the case may be so when i realized that dang i could sing and people not not just sing but people want to hear me sing for whatever reason mm. i just went with it you know what i'm saying so yeah growing up around it and seeing my mom even in the studio at some points my mom was recording so it just made me it created the possibility or it, or it created the awareness for the fact that it was possible for me to do something of that sort you know what i'm saying so yeah yeah. Wow, and you grew up singing in the church, correct? Hundred percent. Yeah, like I was maybe like eight or nine, leading the songs, and not just the youth uh, choir, but the adult choir, man. So, yeah, I was always singing in the church or at um, weddings or events in general, bro. Like wow. once the city found out that he could sing, like his mom, every chance they got is like, here, give him the mic, give him the mic, do something. Yes, you know adults pouring yeah. to his baby. Nah, for okay. real, for real. 
I live for that. And I'm, I could be biased, but I just believe that the best musicians grew up in a church. I don't care if you rap, nah. whether you do pop rock. If you grew up yeah. in a church, it's something about that energy in the yeah. church. It's something about hearing them play the drums, playing the organs. And, and if you led, I used to sing with the choir myself. <laughs> I didn't think I could sing at the time, but they told me I could. I yeah, was like, yeah. all right, whatever. Let me hear something. <laughs> Let me hear something. I can rap. I'll nah, rap. I'm joking. I will. Rap. <laughs> <laughs> no, because I'm not about to... You yeah, Josh, yeah. Nah, you about to sit here and hurt my feelings? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's been so exciting to watch you though, and just knowing your backstories. Yeah. That just, I just wish I could see footage from back in the day where you know you create your D Josh documentary, and you could be That's like, "They go little Josh right That's there crazy. singing." Yeah. It would just be so cool to see. I think we got footage to dig up. We can make that happen. Make it happen. Yeah, y'all heard sure. it now. For make sure. it hey, happen. Will Power. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I was sitting here thinking about how, uh, like, just watching your growth. I met Josh at BeatCon. Shout out to BeatCon for man. introducing me to him. And yeah. ever since then, I've been like, oh, my gosh, I love him. Love. You know, so um, I've been like, wow, just watching you grow. I was checking your numbers. You got, like, 4,000-some monthly listeners on Spotify. Some Come of your on, streams man. are, like, 30,000. Yeah. You just you just signed with Bandwidth yeah, back yeah. in April. Uh, I okay. think. Somewhere around, around that, that time. time. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so <laughs> how does it feel 2020 yeah. minus COVID? What do you what do you feel about your career right at this moment? At this present moment, if I'm being honest, it's kind of like being Michael Jordan your whole life. Ooh. And people tell we can cuss, right? Yeah, you can cuss. Yeah, all right, so <laughs> <laughs> but nah, it's like being Jordan your whole life, bro. So I was the kid, I was a kid, people always was like, um, it's something about him. I don't know what it is, but he's special. Teachers and shit would always favor me and stuff. Were you a class clown? I get class clown vibes. Yes, definitely. Okay. <laughs> until until I got, I would say in high school, I got, I was so mature. That's when I first started getting on like knowledge and wisdom. So senior year, I'm like, y'all tripping. We about to be grown, y'all. You know what I'm saying? For real, for real. But I definitely mean, a, a a goofy kid. You know what I mean? But mm -hmm. in this space of my career, I've experienced so many different changes and sacrificed so much. You know what I'm saying? Like. I got a kid. I don't get to be around every day because I'm pursuing this. You feel me? I dropped out of college for a full scholarship because I just knew how divine and purpose driven this was. You know what I'm saying? So in this space, it sounds good now, but there were points where I was kind of um, in the dark, I guess, about my gift. Or it was a space where I felt so uncomfortable with how I made other people feel sometimes. Like my mm. light can be so big. And you might not know who you are yet, and I don't want you to feel like you got to diminish or relinquish certain things. So I started to, for the comfort of other people, which was starting to mess me up. You know what I mean? So finally, as an artist, I'm starting to step into this whole, like, certain people have to learn how to be stars, bro. I've been a star my whole life. As, as humble and modest as I can say that. It's like, mm. you know what I mean? So finally accepting it in this space. Probably today, the conversation I had with... um. DJ Prince Ice, bro, like, he don't even know that some of the stuff that he said was kind of helping me, like, damn, I so am, that, DJ I am that nigga, you know what I'm you saying, are. so, no, nah, it's, it's, it's dope to be where I am right now, bro, it's dope, that's so dope, yeah. and, um, you said so much that made me want to inquire more, yeah, yeah nah, <laughs> ask away, for sure, oh my gosh, what was the question I literally just had, it lost me, yeah. So let me just, since it lost me, it'll come back. <laughs> oh, yeah. So let's get into some of your projects. You yeah. dropped like three projects this year. Mm -hmm. You are busy. I'm like, every time you turn around, he got new music. I can't even catch up. Yeah. But guess what? I love that you're doing it in both uh -huh. because it's like, when I'm creating my R&B playlist, yeah. Josh definitely going on there because he has so time. much dope stuff. And I just wanted to know what inspired the the concept of the card suit, yeah. because I think it's very dope that you're doing it. I don't think people may realize it's like a pattern. Yeah. They don't. <laughs> and I don't. You may not want to share all the sauce, but give nah, us some can. of that sauce. Um, so <laughs> truthfully, when I first started working with Will Power, man, shout out to Will, man. But when I first started working with Will, I was it was a development program. So it was supposed to be six months. I would go to the studio. I had quit my job. I would go to the studio. Every morning, he used to be like, beat me to the studio. <laughs> so we would get there at like 9 something, but I would work out with our trainer from 10 to 11, do a vocal lesson from 12 to 1, mm. shower. Because got all this stuff is in-house in the studio. So shower at the studio, change, eat, and jump in the studio from 3 until the sun come up sometime, and then try to beat him to the studio again wow. the next morning. So you do this for six months, you create so much music, mm. so much music. And we was just... 
at a space where it's like we don't have the sound quote unquote that we looking for for this to be a debut album but we can't not put these records out mm-hmm. and one day Will was like man we putting out 52 records next year a song a week and me being how I am an athlete at heart I was in a marching band at Alcorn swag school so the mentality is just like if this is what you say we doing that's what we doing and I'm 10 toes I'm going you know what I'm saying Yeah. so once we made that decision we did shout out to my marketing person uh, Tahoe she kind of was like Y'all yeah, do know it's 52 cars in the deck, right? And the whole room was like, nigga, that's ah. it, yeah. So we went with that. It's four, 52 cars in the deck, four quarters in the music, yeah, four suits in the car deck. So we just decided, A, we knew people was going to start missing out on certain releases because I there's no artist I love enough to listen every Wednesday or every whatever, you <laughs> feel me? So I would just wait, which made us decide to put the releases and package them into bodies of work at the end of each quarter. Really- you know what I'm saying? So yeah, that was that was the most high. You know, I can't give that credit to a human or take it. It just kind of happened because we ain't know COVID was coming, but because we stuck mm. to the 52, it allowed us to keep our feet moving. When I saw other artists, like, what do I do? What do I do? Scrambling. So yeah, I think that was God. I can't even. You know, it was divine. It was divine for real. Yeah, yeah. I live for those moments. You know, like you never would. Nobody saw COVID coming. We thinking we just exactly. gonna have a normal life. And then boom, we like, wait, yeah, they not, we ain't able to book no shows. For real. Like, so how has that uh, impacted what you're doing now as far yeah. as the goals you had set and how you're navigating toward them now? <clears throat> um, man, I would just say what I just told you outside about pivoting, it, it taught me how to have to do that in real time. Mm-hmm. Because being an artist, it's not something that I can or am even going to take a hiatus from. So we knew we got to do something. What are we going to do? We know we're releasing these records, but... Man, I'm an energy person, so the virtual shows is cool, but I like to feel people. I like to be able to look into your eyes Mm -hmm. and, you know what I'm saying, be very intentional with whatever energy that I'm sending your way and hoping that we can transfer that and make an exchange of it. So it was a little difficult for me because I'm not the social i'm not that type of person like i said i'm an energy dude but it just you used me, to being the star you used to like people talking feeding off feeling, yeah, yeah for real for real so it just kind of helped me kind of go more into my bag as a professional entertainer if that makes sense you know what i'm saying so yeah, yeah. I, I love that you can say that because you know covid definitely has a lot of cons but yeah. i think for creatives and entrepreneurs we now learn all right now we know we got to be ready for whatever gets thrown Anything at us. Because you can't predict every single right. thing. But the fact that you were already working toward the plan, yeah. sounds like you have a, a cohesive team and you got God. Like, Come how on. can you do? Come on. For real. Shut up. Hey. <laughs> Snap, no clap. Snaps, no clap. <laughs> yeah. So, let me get into these. Uh, these I have, like, fade five. This is some new thing I've started. So, I'm just going to ask you. Good. Some questions That's about good. some things. So, what is your favorite city to perform in? Columbia, South Carolina. Oh, <laughs> oh, yeah. Now, nah, I would say Columbia in my hometown, man. So, most artists that I know, it's so difficult for them to get their hometown to rock with them. And for whatever reason, my hometown has always rocked with me. And so, when I did my honey tour last year, I did two dates in my hometown, and we sold out back to back packed room some folks had bought tickets for two days that's low so that energy getting back from these folks i grew up with and they know me from little josh in the neighborhood and all that and they still them still being able to see me as what i am or who i am and enjoy that you feel what i'm saying so i would say for real for real here or home what is it that you like about columbia because i think people sleep on yeah what's here so tell us what you particularly the like the truth um the stigma about mississippi in terms of most folks think it's like dirt roads, that type of thing. But mm. there are towns in Mississippi that's just like Columbia. Yeah. So this ain't as big as Atlanta. It's not as fast as Atlanta, but it's not as slow as certain areas of where I'm from. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But it still gives me that energy that I don't get from home. I mean, from Atlanta that I do get at home. You know what I'm saying? So when I come here, the people genuine. Like, I don't feel like celebrities walking around in Columbia, South Carolina like that. You feel me? Same right. in Mississippi. Right. But so it gives me the opportunity, not that I'm a celebrity, but becoming one. But I still, in Atlanta, you got 12,000 followers, 20,000 followers, everybody do. So nobody really mm. cares for real. You know what I'm saying? Good point. But in a, here and at home, it's less about the followers and more about how I make them feel when I meet them. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, I'm coming with good energy every time. So when I come to a place like uh, Columbia, I know that it gives me the space to be able to hone in on that part of me. 
and share that space and exchange their energy with the people here. So that's beautiful. Yeah, for real. That's beautiful. Yeah. Y'all hear that? Come on. Y'all hear that? <laughs> Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, what is your favorite city to travel to, like just for fun? I don't think I've done it yet. So the truth is, like, you're always working. I'm always, always working. traveling to work. Yeah, yeah. Will and them trying to plan something for me now because legit, the past at least four years of my life, I haven't taken a vacation. Wow. Not dead ass. This is a vacation. It's so work. look at God trying to tell us he need a vacation. Nah, for real. It's, it's <laughs> real though. Cause seriously. Like, right now, we're going into album mode. There's a certain space that I need to be in to create that. I see the same things every day because I like, I'm in the studio literally six days out of seven. You know what I'm saying? Which I'm not complaining about that. I pray for it. But I don't really have time to do those things. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, trying to create spaces to where I'll be able to answer that question the next time. So, where do you want to go then? Let's, let's, let's uh, put that out in the, in the universe. I want to go to L.A. I haven't. I went out of the South one time. I was on tour with Jay Holiday last year. We went to Chicago okay. for a show. And that was my first time leaving the show. I mean, leaving the South, but even that was for work. You know what I'm saying? So I would say LA. I want to go to LA. I want to go to Jamaica. I want to see the world. So that's 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 difficult to say. I don't know. That's beautiful. Yeah. And it's going to happen. Yeah, yeah. Okay? It's going to happen. In real time, happen. it's happening right now. I yeah. live. So what is one of your favorite? Matter of fact, I'm going to ask you to give me five. Mm. Favorite. I'm going to give five for R&B and five for hip hop. So let's go R&B first. All right. Artists. Five favorite artists. Um, as far as songs, if you, Ooh. or what y'all believe in, just give me five. Five R&B <laughs> songs, that's tough. Um, oh man, <laughs> can I do the artist? Yeah. All right, yeah. we're going to go with <laughs> Tank. Yeah. I'm going to go with Jasmine Sullivan. Yeah. Um, I'm going to go with Stevie Wonder. I'm a god. It's so tough. <laughs> I'm gonna go with. I'm gonna go with somebody modern right now. I do, sir. Say that again, sir. His name, sir. Is sir. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Look at and my sister. <laughs> Look at him. I gotta get the last one to a woman uh, who's new that I listen to a lot. Let's go with Victoria Monet. Ooh. Yeah. Let's do that. And, and it's rap. Let's do Big Crit. I love that. Uh, Kendrick. Dang. I feel like this cliche. Let me go to something. <laughs> Who I'm listening to in the underground? Smino, um, Saba, mm-hmm. and Jid. That this man no music. Yeah, yeah. There we go. <laughs> That's my five. I live. I yeah. live. So what is your, at this moment, what is your favorite Josh Waters album? One, four, three. <laughs> One, four, three. One, four, three. One, four, three. Yeah. Because that I, was your first one? Exactly, Okay, yeah. okay. That was my first body of work. I think that one was... Um, I worked with my Big Crit is my favorite artist of all time. Like I saw you in the interviews talking about him. So yeah, like I man, mean, growing up without a father figure, I was the kid who like had the opportunity to either be how I am now or be a street nigga completely. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So people like Big Crit, it was like, dang, he not necessarily a street nigga. He played like he conscious, he so forth and so on. You know what I'm saying? So they raised me and they don't even understand. You know what I mean? Yeah. Listening to their music, I got game, I got knowledge. It made me go to Google and searching. Okay, learning about third eyes and things of that nature came from hearing it in raps first and then be like, wait, I got three of them, did Oh, <laughs> you feel me? Which led me to history and some more stuff, man. So, um, Big Crit was my favorite artist of all time, man. So, being able to work with him on that first album, he wrote on yeah. it, he produced on it. Um, and Smoke Dizzard, having people like that. My first body of work, I had people and things included in that project that we didn't have money that could afford it, if that makes sense. Mm. So I think that was my first time putting a compilation together and everything that I had from it was just off of genuine I support So you had to work with what you had and and what came of it was great. Exactly. Yes. So I would say that one because the music, I, my favorite songs are coming out right now. But in terms of what space I was in, what got put into that first body of work, I would say one, four, three. Yeah, love it, love it. Yeah. And hmm. so, what is the favorite thing you like to do when you're not working on music? Which is hard because you make a lot of music. Yeah. So, what do you like to do when you're not working on music? Man, surprisingly, bro, I smoke a lot of weed, bro. <laughs> For real. I feel that. I do. I actually, like, I stopped smoking when I got the bandwidth um, for vocal health. 
So I stopped Ooh. like eight months last year. I didn't smoke, bro. But I used to smoke like a rapper, bro. So I kind of got back into that space. And we were like, man, when we start cutting this album, you're going to have to stop again. I'm like, all right, man. <laughs> but nah, uh, I, I say that's probably one of my favorite hobbies, being out in nature, man. And most importantly, I love going home, being with my family or having my son come to Atlanta, being around my kid. Yeah, a direct reflection of uh, versions of myself that I kind of forgot about. Mm. Um, and just, bro, he give me, I feel like people brag on their kids and big them up, but I ain't lying when I say he's gifted. Like, he remind me of myself in a strange way. So nothing beats that. But yeah, nature. I'm a nature And isn't nothing wrong with uh, big enough your child? You should. If you're not big enough for your child, I kind of question you. But no, nah, some people be capping, so. though. Some people be like, you know, I, but you're right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you're like, oh, I'm gonna fuck that people capping. So, I mean, you know, you know your. Come on. I ain't gonna start. I ain't gonna start. <laughs> Don't be on here starting mess, John. Right, look, for real though, but yeah. <laughs> hey, I like being in nature. I love it. I'm a tree hugger. Nah, but it's real though. Meditate, stuff like that. Anything that brings me tranquility, because my life comes with so much constant motion. So, spaces that allow me to be still, for real. Yeah. Now that you said that, um, your marketing team, we gonna need a photo shoot in nature. All right, y'all hear that? We just y'all did. Got it. We just did that. See, I'm up. Come on, look. All, all the way, way here. We got it. She <laughs> you feel? <laughs> <there? laughs> I can talk to Josh forever. Does my audience have any questions for Josh? Well, <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> you asked all the questions. Yeah. Really? Okay. You did great. Thank you. You did great. I mean, I personally like to hear you relate Columbia to Hattiesburg more, but that's just me because I'm from Columbia. So. Mm, I mean, it's really, so being honest, there's an energy here in terms of like black and white. I like to hear it. You feel Keep me? Keep going. Keep going. Uh, so, <laughs> <laughs> me being from where I'm from, when Donald Trump got elected, bruh, and I'm just 24 too, so it's like, I saw, when I saw Donald Trump get elected living in Atlanta, the world started to seem shocked to his behavior, or like, whoa, people still feel this way? And, but being from Mississippi, we was raised like, bro, you can't even go on that side of town yeah. with without an adult when it's dark. You feel mm-hmm. me? Mm-hmm. And my first encounter with like uh, racism or that type of thing, I was playing baseball and the white, it was my turn to bring snacks. And the white dude like, um, I can't accept food items basically from black people, bro. So keep your chips and your squeezy. And I'm like, dang, you know what I'm saying? I was like six or seven years old. And then just other experiences, man, but here in Columbia, I can tell that y'all have that same level of like, we know what's going on. And Mississippi is like, if they like you, you're going to know it. And if they don't, you're going to know it. Mm-hmm. The rest of the world, some way, somehow, allow uh, certain climates to place veils over their eyes. It's like, what mm-hmm. you think happened to the plan? He your lawyer now. He your police officer now. You know what I'm saying? So when I come here and I'm surrounded by people of color, it's certain things that I don't feel like I got to explain or express because they just get it. You know what I'm saying? So I would think that's one of the biggest things that kind of remind me of home here because I like the white people. It's like, I can tell you don't like me, sir. And that's cool. <laughs> and then the other one, it's like, you're so warm and so welcoming, but there's no gray here. For the most part, anyway. Y'all can correct me if I'm wrong. But... I mean, that's how I like my racism. Oh, yeah, no, nah, straight up. Straight up. Because, man, this is my take on it, bro. My take on racism, man, this might... She can say this shit. Say, speak your truth, yeah, bro. It. It's like, uh, <laughs> my truth is, bro, I ain't really, I'm not, I get it, to be honest. So when I think about white people, y'all only want to separate yourselves from us because y'all fear y'all race being extinct. Because mm-hmm. when you mix one of us with one of y'all, whatever the outcome of that is, it's no longer what y'all once were. You feel what I'm saying? That's why they created the one drop rule. So any speck of anything that's not European is no longer one of them. You feel what I'm saying? Like this, I'm going, you feel me? You can go, because you want to go, so, babe. Nah, right here. Here. So, <laughs> it's just, I get it. I just kind of leave it at that. I get it, for real, for real. And when I come here, I just get that same type of everybody. They know what's going on. We like when you come here. That's why I ask. We yeah. love you. Nah, it's love. And we I feel that way. I'm, bruh, I'm an empath. Telepathy is real. All that shit. I'm a Pisces, a real one, too. So, if y'all didn't, I would feel it. 
<laughs> you know what I mean? But y'all give such genuine energy. And the fact that I'm not where I'm headed, but y'all seeing it at this ground level and still deciding to choose, treat me the way that y'all do, it's how certain artists get to certain spaces and you can't forget about these people. You can't forget about this town or that. You know what I'm saying? Because sure. even at this level, this shit is going to... These are the things that take me to where I'm going next. You understand what I'm saying? It's like these conversations is what's going to make you go tell your friend, like, girl, I met this nigga. Ooh. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but it ain't because I'm putting on the front. It's because I'm being who I am. And it's like, come on. You know, the energy is reciprocated, bro. So it's love. I absolutely, love. that was the thing that stuck out to Josh uh, with me. Like, when I met him at BeatCon, he was just so down to earth. Bro, come in with his shirt off. He's like our generation's usher. And I don't know, I don't like to compare, but like if we had an usher, like if you in the room with him, you see him perform, you're like, oh my gosh, you know how we was just falling out the chair for him. You yeah. know, he's that. And he's just so down to earth, so yeah. respectful and yeah. really appreciative. Like some people will hawk at my platform because I only have a thousand followers. He don't care about that. He's yeah. like, you treat me nice. You you show me love, I'm gonna show you love. And that's, that's yeah, the energy man. we all. It's love. I think mm -hmm. also, Coming from where I come from, there are no platforms. There are no platforms. We even however many followers you have. You know what I'm saying? And I get it. So when I went to college, I was signed to an independent label in high school. And my mom, bro, my mom is so G. I was driving to Atlanta as a 17-year-old by myself. So this label was in Atlanta. They would fax passes to my school's principal's office. Wow. And when I tell y'all my school, they treated me like I was already there. So it's like, you need to go, go ahead. Type of thing, you know what I'm saying? Like, no, like legit. If I, I could have low key been a dummy, they would have just passed me. Like, it's Josh. Josh oh, give him a hundred. Like that type of time. Real talk, bro. So, um, I was just always. I understand what it means to come from a space like this. Nobody from Hattiesburg, Mississippi, has made it and done certain things. You know what I mean? So, when I look at this, this is no different than when I first dropped out of college. And my thoughts were like, how am I going to get these people to know that music is all I'm doing now? Mm -hmm. And I need you to see me as an artist. Don't You knew me from back then. I ain't that no more. This is what I'm on. Yeah. Address me as such. You feel what I'm saying? So, big or small, this could be the next Breakfast Club. You know what I'm saying? And in the hey. event that, that it is that, I'm going to look crazy if I would have shitted on this at this level. You know what I'm saying? Artists, so take like, notes. You got to take notes, and I'm just a little bit of a hater in the back, and you know who I am. <laughs> nah, it's cool. you know who I am. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's cool, and you can't even <laughs> love them anyway, though. You know what I'm saying? Because speak your truth. They, they, speak your truth. whoever miss it, miss it. It ain't for them. So don't even. I don't worry about who don't see me for me. I don't worry about who don't get. You know what I'm saying? See this bandwidth for what it is, or see y'all for what it is. Man, I'm only applying my energy because it's so contagious, it's so infectious. If you ain't fucking with it, you don't deserve it anyway. So I'm only applying that to the people who see it for what it is. You nurturing me, I'm nurturing you. You scratch my back, I scratch yours, you feel me? It's a relationship. It's a relationship. Yeah. You feel me? So it's kind of, it's easy. It's easy. It's yeah. <laughs> Look how he got everybody in the room like, oh, I love it. Nice I fucking love it. I don't even want this to end. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he's nice, not going nice. nowhere. He gonna stay in South Carolina with us. Y'all mm -hmm. cool with it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm, I'm just cool. <laughs> <laughs> you going to steal him? <laughs> <laughs> you gonna his life? Nah. Nah. Okay, nah. I don't, I don't, I don't even have a plan. I was just thinking we, we need him to stay here. <laughs> no, I'm just goofy. Don't <laughs> Staying. I'm staying. Just come back to Columbia and perform. That all it's costs. easy, man. Even this... when Columbia doesn't want you to perform, come back and perform. See? <laughs> We're gonna do another event. We're, yeah. Come on, I we'll appreciate talk. it. I'm okay. here. Yeah, yeah. See, this is an event coordinator right here. Oh. Festivals yes. and no, all. The woman. She was, I, Cut I, it I out. It. Stop hiding. Yeah. <laughs> we show love in this room. You know what I'm saying? We 100%. big up. We big up our people. So, yeah, I think we're going to wrap it up there. And it's been fun. And, Josh, what, what do you want to promote right now? Anything you want to say uh, in closing? So, like she, like we talked about, we we releasing. What was that? I'm stuttering. We <laughs> releasing a record a week, man. 52 records this year. So, find some time. Sit down, find solitude, and just tune in. Tap in, man. 52 records, four albums this year. I need y'all to go listen to that. It's good. You will not regret it. Trust me. They are on Creasy's Media Playlist for a reason. All right? Yes. <laughs> All right. We lit. We lit. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Can we get a round of applause? Look at that energy. Look at that energy. Can't let you walk away from me. Can't let you walk away. Girl. I've been losing patience
since I've been needing you near me. I've been calling son of the sun down. I know that you hear me. I know you down cause you show me good love. I might go crazy if you say that we don't. I know that love don't.